Hello and good morning. I'm Katie McQuage Lucas and my pronouns are she and hers. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Reading this morning. I would like to take a moment to remind you that tonight at 7 p.m. is our solstice service on Zoom. And then on Christmas Eve, we'll have a couple of services go up on YouTube. They'll be the same service, but we'll set it up as two separate ones so that you can chat with each other live if you'd like to do so. Today, you can drive up to the church between 2 and 3 p.m. and pick up a goodie bag and it will have candles and a booklet with readings and lyrics so you can follow along at home and maybe a treat or two. And now, welcome. Know that you have a place here, that you are held in community here. I invite you this morning to find your place in the nativity story, to imagine where you might encounter the holy or the spirit of love. And I invite you to ponder your own star of hope. And now we will light our chalice together. And in the light of truth, the warmth of community, and the fire of commitment, we gather this day. May the flame we now kindle be to us a symbol of the holiness we seek. We are Unitarian Universalist, Church of the Open Mind, Loving Heart, and Helping Hands. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we light our last candle, purple, representing peace. In the season that has invited us to wait, on this morning, traditionally, we would be gathered in our sanctuary for a retelling of the nativity story, remembering the birth of a baby in a stable so long ago. That baby, Jesus of Nazareth, would grow to teach and to travel, and his story speaks to us across time. And for many, Jesus of Nazareth is known as the Prince of Peace. Fitting on this day, we light a candle, meaning peace in our hearts. May we always have longing for peace in our homes, in our communities, and for everyone. Good morning, I'm Mary Cunningham. I'm the music director here at the UU Church of Reading. And on this fourth week of Advent, we're going to sing about peace, finding more peace somewhere. And our fourth candle represents that peace. Peace in our homes, peace in our land, and peace in our world. Won't you sing with me our final opening hymn in this season of Advent. There is more peace somewhere. Good morning. I'm Reverend Hank Purse. My pronouns are he, him, and his. Would you join me as we open our hearts in prayer? You who are known by many names, yet by no name fully known, as we enter the end of the year, a year when we have been thinking of our losses, we should also think of all that we have learned. What has been overlooked. Thus, may we learn to live like those who constantly expect beautiful surprises. May everything that happens to us be received as if we were bringing a new joy into the world. May we see the priceless worth of ordinary people and seize the hidden gold of each day. So 
may we follow in the steps of the shepherds and the sages and come even unto Bethlehem. We hold in our prayers this morning our friend Megan Quinlan, whose father John died this past week. John had been a teacher here in Reading for many, many years. So may Megan and her husband Ray and their children be comforted by our concern and the expressions of sympathy by all who knew him. And may we also keep in our prayers those who have loved ones in the hospital, those who are ill, as well as those members and friends who are recovering from illnesses. Now, we are called to be faithful to life and faithful to each other and to ourselves. The spirit of this season is a spirit of hope and faith and amazing possibilities which are open to us. Let us nurture this hope and this faith and proclaim it to the world. Amen and blessed be. Eight years ago, churches across our nation and around the world were filled with parents and adults watching children perform a Christmas pageant. But that year, it was different. The Newtown shooting had occurred just days before. That year, this little children's play took on a different meaning as we watched our children be children. And we thought of those parents robbed of that experience. For over a year now, we here at our church have shared our plate with nonprofits who support our religious values. The recipients for the month of December is Every Town for Gun Safety. This organization founded in 2013 was founded with the goal of ending gun violence across our country. We ask you to donate to that. To donate, you just need to go to our church's website and hit the donate now button or to mail a check directly to the church. Remember that generosity is a religious act. So may our gifts be transformed into strength for our faith community, into comfort, food and shelter for those in need. And may we be transformed by generosity.
Good morning. I'm Sally Lieberman and my pronouns are she and her. Thank you to Ruth and Bethiah for lighting our chalice this morning. And thanks to Reverend Hank and Rebecca for leading our children's affirmation. Each year at Christmas time, our church celebrates the birth story of Jesus of Nazareth, a teacher and prophet from our religious roots. We retell a story that includes human struggle, birth, stars, prophecy, wanderers, common and wise, and common wise folk. And of course, we tell the story at Christmas time, and Jesus's birth story is hopeful. In talking to Reverend Hank and Katie, I learned that this story is truly meaningful for both of them. And I've asked them to join us this morning to tell you a little bit about why. It is funny that a story that happened 2,000 years ago is still lived out. It still appears. It appears in our houses with little um, nativity sets. Look at this. Here's Mary. And here's Joseph. And he's holding, um, I think, uh, palm leaves there. And then this enormous baby Jesus. Look at that baby Jesus. Maybe some of you have uh, figurines like this at your house. Um, Sometimes they come with animals. Here's a, a, a giant sheep. This sheep is, gosh, it's bigger than giant baby Jesus and a donkey and even a, um, I think this is an angel. Yeah, it's an angel. And it tells a story that, that turns the world upside down. 2,000 years ago, all of the stories of the births of gods and of leaders were things where they were born into opulence. They were born into fantastic settings. They were, they were yes, there were angels, but they were born in, in palaces and they, or they, they descended from heaven. And here instead is the story of a baby who goes on, who grows up to become a prophet and a teacher whose message still speaks to us now, not born into opulence, but born to a poor teenage mother and a carpenter father, not even in a hotel, but in the stable of an inn. It turns the whole story upside down. This was maybe foretold Maybe not, but it's not what anyone was expecting, which is often what happens when people are born. Things happen that you did not expect. It's an amazing part of the story. For me, um, since I am not a Christian, I didn't grow up, I didn't even really grow up with the Christmas story per se. Um, actually reading it in the text is a really strange experience and I think it's not really clear if you're, you know, watching TV movies or looking at the nativ nativity set that Mary is a teenager and that Joseph is a carpenter and not like a contractor making good money. He's wandering from town to town doing odd jobs. These are not people with money or status. And when I think about, you know, what does that look like today? I think about people, you know, migrating around the country looking for work. I think about mothers holding their children, their babies and trying to find a better life for themselves here in the United States and getting stopped at the border and just what it must mean to be born into the Roman Empire in military occupation as this baby with nothing. You know, you're not even born in the hotel, you're born in the parking lot. And I think what I see in this story is there's something really special about the idea that this is who God is. Even if that's not my God, I just, I see something really powerful and radical in the idea that God is not in the palace. God is right here with all of us living our lives. God 
is embodied in regular everyday people. And one of the things that I, I see when I see the story is I try, you know, in finding myself in it, I'm not Mary. And I'm definitely not one of the Jewish people living under occupation. If I'm going to place myself as a white person in this story, I'm probably just some Roman minding my own business somewhere else. Um, but when looking at the story and seeing where God chooses to be, I can make the choice to follow. I can decide that I want to stand there where God is with children, with mothers, with people looking for work. And I can choose to live out love in that way. On this Sunday morning, we will retell the story told across ages. And we thank our wise and gracious young people who have helped us bring the nativity online and make it alive this year. Watch too for nativities from the past and the present, and you'll see friends of all ages in different stages. Before we begin, let's remind ourselves as Unitarian Universalists, we know that each night a child is born is a holy night. Let's sing together. For our service of the Living Nativity, let's sing together the beautiful lullaby, which is included in our teal hymnal, For So the Children Come. We'll sing it through twice. Each night a child is born, is a holy night, a time for singing. A time for wondering, a time for worshiping. Each night a child is born, is a holy night. Each night a child. people were required to register their names in the city or town where they had been born so they could pass taxes there. For some people that meant being meant the long jersey in the city of Nazareth where a carpenter named Joseph was, lived. He heard Caesar's call and made plans to register his name the faraway city of Bethlehem also known as the city of David. Joseph traveled with a brave young woman named Mary. She was expecting her first child. They traveled by day and sometimes through the dark of night and by the light of the stars. Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem under a twinkling sky. Mary's baby was born, will be born very soon. Joseph asked to stay in the inn so that Mary might have the bed to rest. But on this, on this twinkling night long ago, there were no rooms open in the inn. Fortunately, the kind innkeeper offered the travelers shelter in his stable. The stable was warm and friendly. With gentle beasts, there were sheep, very friendly sheep, donkeys, and cows. The animals welcomed Mary and Joseph into the stable. There, with the animals singing and the stars twinkling, Mary gave birth to her firstborn child, a sweet little baby delivered into this world, a child of mystery. A child was born, and this was indeed a holy night. It was now a time for wondering 
and a time for worshipping. The animals welcomed Mary's child as she swaddled him in bands of cloth, gently laying him in the hay-filled manger. And so it was, the child known as Jesus was born that night beneath a twinkling sky, surrounded by animals with his mother and Joseph the carpenter. Out in the distance there were shepherds in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. The animals sang as the stars brightened in the night sky. On such a holy night, we would surely see angels. On this holy night, the shepherds in their fields kept watch over their flocks, comforted by the lights of the stars, when suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared before them. And this angel of the Lord was truly magnificent. And the glory of the Lord shone down upon the shepherds, and they were terrified by light, such light and such magnificence. But the angel said to them, Fear not. For I bring you great news of joy. For in this day in the city of David is a Savior, a child who is a Messiah, the Son of God. You will find the child swaddled in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And then there was a multitude of angels, and the angels were calling, Peace on earth, goodwill to all. Then the angels left the stuffers in the fields and returned to the starlit heavens above. The stuffers looked into the sky, then to one another. Let us go now to Bethlehem and find this child. Let us see for ourselves what the angel has promised. The stuffers quickly gathered their flock and traveled to Bethlehem, where they found Mary and Joseph, and then the newborn child laying in the manger. I was the, just as the angle had said, the stuffers were amazed he had told Joseph the message about the newborn child. There he may be a savior, a Messiah, a son of God. Mary heard their words and held them quietly in the heart. The stuffers and sheep knelt before the manger, wondering about all the, the they had heard. There were animals under the stars. They worshipped this child that they had found. In the early evening, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, a bright new star rose in the east. There were three wise folk. They may have been scholars or maybe astronomers, maybe kings or queens. They saw this new star rise in the distance. They remembered an ancient prophecy that spoke of a Messiah, a savior who would be born in Bethlehem. The wise folk set on a journey following that bright new star that rose in the east. 
Could it be true that there would be a special child born under that star in Bethlehem? Gazing toward the heavens, seeing the star, and humble stable below, they asked, Is this the child of ancient prophecy, born to be a king and savior of all mankind? We have to see the star in the skies, and we have to come praise him, and to bring him gifts. Our wise folk were overcome with joy when they found the child. They gave him rare gifts from their homeland, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gentle persons and creatures of all kind followed a bright new star that night, joining Mary and Joseph and the animals at the stable. Together they welcomed and worshiped the child, gathering in awe of the newborn child who would be called Jesus. Later he would be called a Messiah. Even now, he is called the Prince of Peace. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, of fields and floods, rock hills and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. Sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness, and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. This is a story about a shepherd who did not go to Bethlehem. The angels had filled the sky with radiance, but now the glory had faded and the shepherds and the sheep stood under dim starlight. The people were shaken by the wonders they had seen and like the animals, they huddled close together. The oldest shepherd said, let us go now to Bethlehem and see what has come to pass. Bethlehem lay beyond a far hill, and on the crest of the hill was a star. As the shepherds broke out of their circle, there was one shepherd, called Amos, who stayed. He dug his crook into the grass, and he held on to it. Come on, cried the oldest shepherd, but Amos shook his head. And another shepherd called out, It was an angel. You heard the tidings. I heard, said Amos. I will stay. You don't understand, the old shepherd said. An angel, 
we go to see the child, even now born in Bethlehem. It is not in my heart, replied Amos. And now the oldest of the shepherds became angry. With your own eyes, she cried out, you have seen the angels and you heard them. It was like thunder ringing out in the night. And again, Amos said, it is not in my heart. Another shepherd broke in and said, because the sky has not fallen, it is not enough for Amos. Amos must have something louder than the voice of God. Amos held on tightly to his crook and said, I need a whisper. And they laughed at him and they said, and what should this voice whisper in your ear? And he was silent and they kept teasing him, tell us, what says the God of Amos, the little shepherd of a hundred sheep? And Amos said in a loud, strange voice, to my hundred sheep, I am a savior. And he pointed at them. Look at how frightened they still are from the loud voices of the angels. God is busy in Bethlehem. God has no time for a hundred sheep. They are my sheep and I will stay. And the other shepherds understood for they did see that the sheep were afraid. So before they left, each one talked to Amos and told him what to do to take care of all of their sheep. But one or two still turned back to tease him. We shall see new glories, and you, Amos, you will see sheep. Amos didn't mind, for he thought to himself, one shepherd more or less won't matter to God. And soon the animals stopped trembling, and they began to graze as the sun came up over the hill where the star had been. Amos said to himself, for sheep the angels shine too much. A shepherd is better. And with the morning, the other shepherds came down the road from Bethlehem, and they told Amos all about the manger and the wise men and the gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And when they were done, they said to him, And did you see wonders here in the fields with the sheep? Amos told them, Now my hundred are 101. And he showed them a lamb, which had been born just before the dawn. Was there for this a great voice out of heaven? Asked the oldest of the shepherds. And Amos shook his head, and he smiled at her and said, To my heart, there came a whisper. Friends, I have three things I want to remind you of before we move on to the closing sections of our service. The first is that if you uh, have signed up to pick up, uh, to get a bundle, do that in just a little while, between two and three o'clock over at the church. Remember that our solstice service is this evening at seven o'clock. There's information in the church's newsletter about uh, how to watch that. And that our Christmas Eve service, we have two services. Um, it's the same service, but it's played at five and at seven. And we want you to, uh, on, on that night, uh, to tune in. Now, will you join me as I extinguish this chalice? We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts. <laughs> Centuries of skill and science span the past from which we move, yet experience questions whether with such progress we improve. While the human lot we ponder, lest our hopes and humor fray, God surprises earth with heaven, coming here on Christmas Day.